Welcome back everyone to part three of our three-part MochaPod modeling series in Blender and it's finally time to integrate everything we've done before into a real image. With that said, let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do, of course, is to match our digital environment to our photograph. And we do this by camera matching it in a tool, an open source tool called FSpy, it's a great tool. And um, this is very easy. You see here, um, I simply drag these lines, which represent the axes of our coordinate system, to all the edges in our scene. First, I do this with the x-axis, and finally, I do it with the y-axis. And this will define our floor plane in the later image. Now I set my origin and this tool FSpy does everything for me. Let's export um, the file and go to Blender. And there is a plugin, FSpy importer plugin, um, which as you see here, lets you import the scene. And now um, camera is perfectly matched. The, our focal length is perfect as it was in the original photograph. And now you have to yeah, at least roughly recreate the original scene. Um, I do this by adding this cube and matching it to, to all the edges of this countertop extrude it and move it um, so it fits with the photograph. Very helpful for this is to have your original image um, as a background image. Uh, this is automatically added uh, if you import it via the, the FSpy importer plugin. And you see here, I quickly create the walls. It doesn't need to be perfect for this and you don't have to remodel everything that's in your original scene, but it has to, to fit roughly because this geometry uh, will later be used to project our uh, scene onto it. And um, yeah, this is very helpful for, for accurate reflections, for accurate lighting. This is needed if you want to integrate something in into the real world, basically. Now, let me um, roughly match the, the counter uh, right here, the, the stove. And uh, since our mocha pot will be positioned on, on this part of, of this gas stove, I will quickly remodel this as well. I use, it, uh, use a cylinder to do this. It doesn't need to be, to be perfect, but it should match the rough shape. If this was a video uh, instead of an image, I um, would have needed to track it, of course. Um, but since this is just a still image, this will be a lot easier. Okay, now let's select the top and make an inset, move this one down to roughly match the shape and extrude these, these parts um, as they are in the original. Again, very rough. Our mocha pot simply needs something to stand on. Do this remeshing. Um, it's important not to stay in the camera view as this um, all the time, since yeah, it's great to match all the shapes, but you have to go out like I do here and um, have a look at your model in the 3D coordinate space, since sometimes um, things don't uh, quite line up. Um, and what I'm doing now is um, uh, organizing my scene. I create some collections for all all meshes and now I append my mocha pot mesh. This is the one we did in part one and two. If you've not seen part one and two, um, you can have a look at uh, the description below. There you will find some links. And now I try to roughly match the size. It's um, it's not very easy to, to get the size right since um, we don't have a reference right now. But um, in a second, I think I will look some images on Google Google image search uh, to find to approx approximately find the right size. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Let's have a look. And um, there are a lot of examples. I look for one which is on a on a stove top and yeah I think it roughly matches and um, maybe it needs to be a bit larger no don't know let's have a look in cycles um, yeah there are some textures uh, missing obviously I think I've moved them between uh, these two tutorials so let's quickly um, reconnect the data and this takes a second and Blender crashes, <laughs> but now we should be back. Let's turn on adaptive sampling for our rendering since this will speed up our rendering process significantly. Yeah, and this doesn't look too bad. 
Let's work a bit more on the lighting. For that, I go into the world um, world lighting and choose an environment texture, which is simply the image you see in the background. This is, of course, not an equi rectangular image. Um, it's not 360 degrees, but it does the job and gets our lighting in the in the rough ballpark. Um, but of course, I need to add a light on top because in in the original image you see some some small some small lights um, uh, right on top, and I will try to match the color and the intensity, of course, the the direction of our uh, light. I think these are a bit smaller since they um, look quite quite hard, and this should roughly match final image. I will quickly duplicate our area light and put it in front since this will be the, um, the environment lighting. I make it a bit more blue, give it a bit a larger size um, to create some interesting reflections on our um, mocha pot. This is um, what I'm looking for at the moment. Duplicate the slide since obviously, obviously there are two in the, in the final uh, image and rotate it a bit. It's um, always a balance between realism and um, artistic um, artistic properties, but uh, yeah, I think this looks quite good. Of course, the, the environment light should be a bit stronger. And um, yeah, it's, now it's, a, it's a matter of going back and forth, changing intensities. Since I think this was a bit too bright for our scene. Um, you see, I've um, draw, simply drawn this rendering boundary um, to not just render the whole frame, but just a little piece in the, in the middle. And this helps to match it to the surroundings. Now let's select every, every object in our scene and press Control J to join them into one mesh. Go into the shader editor. Now let's add an image texture by pressing Control T and select your background image as a texture. Now let's go into edit mode and project from view. But first you need to add some geometry to work with. So let's go inside and press subdivide um, uh, uh, multiple times and again do project from view. And this will exactly match our background image to the geometry. This process is called um, projection mapping or camera mapping in this case. And this is commonly used um, to, to get textures from a real video or image into the 3D world. And this will um, make sure our reflections and lighting and shading is accurate. In a perfect world, we would have uh, multiple in images and we could use um, the um, UV mapping, the UV project modifier in Blender to map um, a, a real um, 3D uh, mesh, but I think this works in this case. A very um, a great side effect of this is that you have the mocha pot integrated in your final image, so you, you can have a better look at what the final result will be. Now let's deselect our mesh from rendering in camera view since we don't want it. We just want it for our diffu diffuse, glossy and um, reflection, but it shouldn't be visible in the final camera since we want to composite our mocha pod render on top of the real image in the compositor later on. Um, but of course, I uh, experimented a bit. You see it's um, uh, still reflected in our mesh, but um, doesn't get shown in camera. Okay, now let's go to film and enable transparency. And now this will remove our background environment texture and we will render it over an alpha background, which is complete trans completely transparent. And to better match the lighting, I'm now going to re reposition some lights. Um, it is um, now very helpful that you can see your, your mesh um, basically integrated in the final scene and the final image. So you can further match everything. Maybe increase the intensity of this light a bit. Yeah, and with that done, I think we're ready to render. So now let's... Uh, Let's delete our render border. 
And I think it is everything is set. Now let's press F12 and render our image. This is of course sped up right here. My computer is not so fast, but um, yeah, I think I waited about five minutes, don't know, something like this. Let's save our image, important as a PNG with alpha background. And now let's hop into Photoshop and place our image in the scene. To match the image to our uh, background, I will first create a black and white layer or a black and white image, since this makes um, getting contrasts right a bit easier. And now I uh, add a levels adjustment and try to match the black and white levels to our background image. Of course, this is way off. It's a bit too bright. I think the dark, the black parts need to be crushed a bit more. And this black and white um, matching process is uh, very, very helpful. And now you see it matches a whole lot better. Let's um, adjust it a bit since um, it should look look a bit more accurate. Now let's add in a color balance adjustment layer and try to match it. Um, of course, use it as a clipping mask to only affect our mocha pot. Give it a bit more, a bit more realistic look. It's all these fine, fine adjustments which finally make our image look great. Let's blur it a bit. About one or 0 0.1, 0 0.2 pixels, since um, right out of the of the um, render engine, this is a bit too sharp. And now I'm simply painting shadows, uh, manual painting, manually painting in shadows on another layer. Change the blending mode, and this process is quite iterative. So you have some small contact shadows. You have the larger, yeah, right, like ambient occlusion, which um, should make everything a bit darker, which is um, touching your object. I'm playing a bit with uh, intensities right here. Reduce the opacity. This is a very creative process. Um, it takes some time and it's always about uh, zooming in, zooming out, looking at your image from a bit far out, farther away and then going close up into the details. Uh, this is uh, this ambient occlusion effect I was talking about. You, you need to be aware that you don't overdo this effect. So let's turn it on, let's turn it off. Yeah. And what should we do next? I think now it's time to crop our image to the final size. Um, <laughs> this process took some time for me since I wasn't exactly sure how to, to finally create this composition. Um, first I was going for, for uh, uh, this portrait kind of style image. And I think in the final image I made it a bit wider don't know yeah I think this is um, the way it stays for a moment and now let's select our background color and paint it on top as a kind of a light wrap effect since you have uh, these strong lights from top and um, I simply sample um, the background layer right here and paint over the edges and this will further integrate it into our scene do this with the shadow parts, but I, I also do this with the uh, light parts on top. Change your blending mode to something that fits your scene. And now it's integrated a bit better. I, I typically reduce the effect of these things by changing the opacity right here. Let's add a new layer and do exactly the same, of course, as a clipping mask. But this time, uh, this will uh, further enhance the lighting on top. Of course, these are all things we could have done in Blender, but uh, I find it a lot easier to do these things in Photoshop. Now let's have a look at the contrast again. And now um, this is essentially the same as um, a dodge and burn. Um, you uh, simply add some highlights and add some shadows on your image, change the blending mode, and then go to Gaussian blur and uh, blur it a lot. And this will increase the contrast, these, these micro contrasts, of course, reduce the opacity since this was a bit too strong. 
Now let's do the same with the uh, dark parts. Um, this is uh, essentially your choice where you want the dark and light parts to be. Uh, I um, do this process to all of my um, 3D renders, then this will um, make it look a whole lot better. To finally give it a last touch and to define the overall look, I will now add a color lookup table to um, the image. There are some presets from Photoshop and I usually go through all of these presets by simply using my scroll wheel on the mouse to uh, look what, uh, what fits my scene. And then of course, reduce the opacity, add another color, color balance and do the same all over again. And in the end, this will give you a great look. Of course, in this final post-processing step, you could use Adobe Camera Raw. There are some great tools to, to work um, uh, in there. Um, but I think in this case, I'm just using color lookup tables. This will further match both scenes uh, with each other, since both um, get the same color balance and um, this will help to to essentially marry both images together. I usually position them in a group and reduce its opacity and always have a look at this. Now I'm changing the image resolution to make it a bit smaller, a bit easier to export and work with. And to give it even more micro contrast, I'm now going to add a high pass filter on top, change the blending mode and reduce the opacity. In this case, I think uh, this didn't work out too well, but usually this will um, add some micro contrast and you can play around with the size. Now, finally, it's time to add some noise on top. Uh, I usually create a new layer and add noise to it, only a small amount, and then um, change it to a multiply and then simply duplicate this image and uh, move one image to the right, one image to the left, a few a few pixels, and then blur everything. This will be an easy way to add some noise to the image, reduce this opacity, and finally add a other levels adjustment to define the overall look of our image. Let's put everything in a group and show before and after. And with that done, I think this concludes our tutorial series. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching all uh, three parts. And um, yeah, if you want to download the project files, of course, there's a link in the description below. Have a look at that. And um, thanks for watching. See you next time.